Let's begin with the clinical vignette. A new need is born with a yellowish discoloration of the skin and sclera. Phototherapy and appropriate vitamin supplementation are begun. And this yellowish discoloration of neonate resolved at one peak by this therapy. Which of the following is most appropriate vitamin therapy for this child? Uh, before solving this clinical vignette, first we won't know that the what is a neonatal jaundice. So neonatal jaundice is a basically the yellowish discoloration of skin and sclera due to the increased blue ribbon more than 5 milligram per deciliter. So the neonatus jaundice simply classified into the physiological jaundice and the pathological jaundice. In physiological jaundice, the jaundice not appear in the first 24 hours, while in the pathological jaundice, the jaundice appear in the first 24 hours of the life. The physiological jaundice resolves spontaneously in first to two weeks. While this pathological jaundice does not resolve spontaneously. Next, we moving toward the how the bilirubin is formed through the heme. So now I am going to discuss about the formation of the bilirubin. So the RBC that circulate in the bloodstream contain the hemoglobin as a globular protein inside the RBC that transport the oxygen. So this hemoglobin is a globular protein, consists of the globin protein portion and the heme is iron containing portion. When this RBC are phagocytosed by the macrophages, so what happened? The degradation of the RBC also lead to the degradation of this hemoglobin and this hemoglobin split into the globin portion and the heme portion then this heme portion particularly undergoes conversion to the bilirubin by the enzyme heme oxygenase then this bilirubin is ultimately converted to the bilirubin and this bilirubin is also known as an indirect bilirubin it is a lipid soluble so this unconjugated indirect bilirubin is a more toxic because it is lipid soluble and it can cross the blood brain barrier and it will lead to the connectors. So next this unconjugated bilirubin bind with the albumin and this albumin transport this unconjugated bilirubin to the liver and where the UDP glucuronacyl transferase and enzyme that convert this unconjugated bilirubin to the conjugated bilirubin and that is a water soluble and this bilirubin is also known as an indirect bilirubin. So next, if this conjugated bilirubin is secreted into the bile and this bile is ultimately drained into the intestine where this intestine, this bilirubin, conjugated bilirubin is converted into the urobilinogen by the bacteria. And this 80% of this urobilinogen is excreted in a feces as stercobilin, give the brown color of the stool. And the remaining urobilinogen and then 90% of the, this remaining bilirubin return back to the liver through the enterohepatic circulation. And while 10% goes to the kidney and excreted in a urine as a urobilin, give the yellow color of the urine. So now I'm going to, to discuss about the clinical importance of this enzyme, UDP glucuronyl transferase. So basically, this enzyme lead to the conjugation of the bilirubin. So in this case of the Gilbert syndrome, this enzyme is a decrease. While in case of the krigler nijar syndrome, it is a absent. So both of these syndrome, Gilbert syndrome and the krigler nijar syndrome, the, the child present with the unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia. So why neonatal jaundice takes place? 
So the first thing is increase RBC turnover. So the increase hematocrit in the neonate and decrease fetal RBC lifespan. So it will lead to the increase RBC turnover, increase hemolysis, and the increased conversion of this heme into the below burden and this below burden into the unconjugated below ribbon. So next thing is immature liver. Immature liver mean the UDP glucuronosyl enzyme activities decrease in the neonate. So the decrease conversion of this unconjugated below ribbon into the below ribbon conjugation below ribbon. So last one is a sterile gut. Sterile gut means that this conjugated bilirubin that comes from the bile into the duodenum. So the conversion of this conjugated bilirubin into bilirubin is decreased because of the sterile gut present in the new need. So the treatment of the physiological jaundice is mainly the phototherapy. So what does phototherapy do? Phototherapy do, the, it decompose unconjugated bilirubin into the water-soluble substance that excreted renally. So the next, what phototherapy also degrade the ribofilavin, which is a vitamin B2. So this patient must be, sub, must be supplemented with the vitamin B2. And the symptom of the child resolved one to two week in spontaneously. So this child is must be supple supplemented with vitamin B2 because of increased breakdown of this vitamin by the phototherapy. So the right option is a vitamin B2.